Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will start with the new concept that is dynamic programming, and uh, we shall discuss about all the nitty gritties required for the dynamic programming. It will be very helpful series of the lectures for all the aspirants of the competitive coding. Uh, in every single company which is uh, recruiting to the competitive coding environment, is giving few questions of the dynamic programming for sure. So, uh, to understand the dynamic programming, let us uh, switch back to some uh, some of the concepts of the recursions that we have studied earlier. Let's take uh, uh, a concept of uh, finding out the nth Fibonacci number. So, this uh, very well-known recursive function. So, this says that uh, if we have to find out the nth Fibonacci number, you have to find out n minus first Fibonacci number and n minus second Fibonacci number, and you have to sum these two and you will return there. Now, uh, the base condition for this is that you should have the information about what the first term is. You are saying that that is 0 and the second term is 1 and the rest of the term can be found by this formula Fibonacci n minus 1 and Fibonacci n minus 2. Let us say we have to find out the seventh Fibonacci number. So, this, uh, this uh, uh, actually is the recursion tree that is being formed by uh, considering that the seventh Fibonacci number has to be found. In, in this case, what you are saying that the value of n is 7 and the first call is of Fibonacci 7. The next call will be of Fibonacci 6, although you have to find out Fibonacci 6 plus Fibonacci 5, but since this is a recursive call, so this one will be picked up and this one will be taken only if Fibonacci 6 has been found. So now for this Fibonacci 5 will be called, although we have to find Fibonacci 4, but that will be pending unless this is getting completed. So the next one is the Fibonacci 4 you have to find. Similarly, you have to find the Fibonacci 3 here and then you have to find the Fibonacci 2 here, which is a direct return or that is the base condition according to this function. Fine. So uh, when there is a direct return, this function gets completed and then you can call this one. This is also the base condition, so this will also get returned. So now you have Fibonacci 2 plus Fibonacci 1, that means you have a Fibonacci 3 also. Now since this has got this has got completed, you will now find Fibonacci 2, which is again a base condition. Value of these and these two will be summed up to find the value of Fibonacci 4. And once this has got finished, you will now call Fibonacci 3. This will call Fibonacci 2, and then this will call Fibonacci 1. These two are the base conditions, they will be added and then you get the value of Fibonacci 3. Now you have a value of Fibonacci 5 by adding the value of Fibonacci 4 and 3. You can now call Fibonacci 4. That requires the recursive call of Fibonacci 3 and 2. So we are first going for Fibonacci 3. Then we are first going for Fibonacci 2, which is a direct return. And then Fibonacci 1, which is also a direct return, that means the base conditions. Fibonacci 2 plus Fibonacci 1 gives us the value of Fibonacci 3. Now you can call this Fibonacci 2. This is also the base condition. Once we have the value of this and this, you can add these two to find the value of this Fibonacci 4. Once you have the value of Fibonacci 4, you can add these two values to get the Fibonacci 6. And now you can call Fibonacci 5 in the same end that we have done on the left hand side. So what you are seeing that we are making redundant calls here. For example, if Fibonacci 2 has already been found, we are again finding the Fibonacci 2 here. We are again finding the Fibonacci 2 here. We are again finding the Fibonacci 2 here, again here, again here, and here, and here or two. So there are so many calls for the one value. In fact, you can take example of this Fibonacci 3. We are finding it here, 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 and we are finding it here also. So multiple calls are made for the same same and same Fibonacci term. Okay. So what happens because of this? That let's say we uh, let us find out how many total function calls have been there for this case. If this is a tree, this is a binary tree. Okay. This is a binary tree, and some of the elements here are left out. If you add these two, if you delete uh, these these two from here and you add it somewhere here. So tree, tree is uh, almost complete, fine. So 
just for the sake of the convenience let's uh, consider that the tree is not almost complete but the tree is complete and what are the total levels then 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 that is possible we are taking it we are deleted we have deleted this from here and we have added it added it here now this is level 0 level 1 level 2 level 3 and level 4 okay so if we have the uh, if you have to find out the nth fibonacci number that is fn so number of levels will be n minus 3 so what are the total number of function calls at level 0 we have only one function call at level 1 we have two function calls at level 2 we have four function calls at level 3 we have eight function calls at level 4 we have 16 function call and so on and so forth at the n minus third level we will have 2 raised to the power n minus 3 function calls so the total number of function calls are 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 and so on and so forth up to 2 raised to the power n minus 3 so this actually is a geometric progression okay 2 we can write it as 2 raised to the power 1 4 as 2 square 8 as 2 cube 16 as 2 raised to the power 4 so this is a geometric progression with a common ratio 2. Total number of terms in this series are n minus 2. If we exclude one, number of terms are n minus 3. But if we include one, the total number of terms are n minus 2. So the sum of the series will be 1 into 1 means that is the first term multiplied with common ratio that is 2 raised to the power number of terms n minus 2 minus 1 upon common ratio minus 1. So this is actually equals to 2 raised to the power n minus 2. So these are the number of function calls that is taking place. For every function call, we are going to create an activation record in the stack region. So that activation record will be pushed in. And then whenever we are returning that, returning the value from this function, this activation record will be popped out. So for one function call, we are doing one push operation and one pop operation. So the number of operations which is taking place per function call is 2. So the total number of operations are 2 into 2 raised to the power n minus 2. That is 2 raised to the power n minus 1. So this is too much. It is actually approximately equals to the 2 raised to the power n. Fine. So this actually is the total number of operation. If I consider that uh, the push and the pop operations are the constant time operations, then the total number of uh, effort which actually is required for finding out the nth Fibonacci number is c into 2 raised to the power n, which is actually theta 2 raised to the power n. This is an exponential complexity. Fine. Let's say we have, we have to find out the 10th Fibonacci number. So how much effort is required for finding out the 10th Fibonacci number approximately 2 raised to the power 10 into C. Fine. This is 1024 into C. Approximately 1000 operations. And what about the 20th Fibonacci number? We have to do the operations 2 raised to the power 20 into C. That is 1024 into 1024 into C. So this is approximately equals to 10 lakh operations. Okay. Now, if we have to find out the 30th Fibonacci term, it is making 2 raised to the power 30 into C operations, which is actually equals to 1024 into 1024 into 1024. It means 1000 into 1000, approximately 1000 into 1000 into 1000, 10 raised to the power 9 operations. Okay, so it actually is getting in, it's increased exponentially. And what happens that if we are using the same function to find let's say the 50th Fibonacci number it takes huge amount of time to calculate that although it is a very simple thing that we have asked the 50th term the computer takes a lot of time maybe three four minutes it will take three four minutes to give you the answer we do not expect this from the computer we expect the computer to, to respond us in fraction of the second and it is taking three to four minutes to just to give an answer if you are running it on the IDE uh, like uh, uh, the the online compilers like IDE or any dot com, then it will it actually gives you the timeout error. Right? It is it will give you the timeout error, so it is not able to compute at that compiler this value. So this is huge amount of the time, and this is just because we have the exponential complexity. So what we can do that, 
why we are making the redundant calls here let us make some correction once we have found any term let us store that term somewhere in some memory and next time when there will be a same call we will use that memory to give the answer fine if you have already computed this let's say f2 means the second fibonacci number then the next time when second fibonacci term will be asked we will be taking the value of the second fibonacci term from that memory itself we will not make the function call then fine similarly if let's say we have already found the f4 that means the fibonacci uh, term 4 so next time whenever fibonacci term 4 will be called let's say here then we will be using the memory where we have saved the value of this we will not be making the function calls okay so this actually is the concept of the memoization if you have already found the value of any item we are storing that somewhere in the table and we will fetch the value of that from the table itself okay if the fourth fibonacci term has already been found then let us store the value of fourth fibonacci term here and next time when fourth fibonacci term will be asked for we will take the value from here itself okay how can that be done let's will let's make some correction to the function this this function okay so the correction that we are making is let's consider that we have a table okay and we have a direct address table direct address table means if you have to find out the fourth term then we will be looking at the fourth index in the array or fourth index in the table okay so we have already let's say we have already designed a table and that table has all the values set as zero setting up the zeros means that we have we haven't found anything there we haven't found any term find something like this the value of all the terms have been set zero now we have to find out the nth fibonacci term and we will be looking at this memory table let's say this is memorization table m fine and if the value of n is 1 okay if the value of n is 1 what we are doing going to do we're going to set the value of m1 as 0 why is it being done this is done because the base condition is that if the n is 1 the first term is 0 and if the fox if, if the n is 2 that means the second term then we will set the second term as 1 and otherwise it means neither the neither we have the first term nor we have the second term then earlier what we used to do we used to make the direct calls direct function call if it is not 1 or 2 we are making the direct function call and minus 1 and n minus 2 so here we will not be making the direct function call let us first check if this table contains any value other than 0 for example if we have to find out the third the, the, the fourth term so if the value of the fourth term what is the value of uh, fourth term actually this is 2 so if we have already found the fourth term and this fourth term has been set to 2 we should not make the function call but if not it means the value is 0 the value of the fourth term is 0 that means the value of the fourth term has not been found yet by then we will be calling the recursive calls so this else means we have we, are, we don't have one we don't have to find the first term we don't have to find the second term in fact we have to find third or any other term in any other higher term for that let us check if the memory table at nth index is equals to 0 that means we haven't found that term yet in that case let us make the recursive call so how can the recursive call be made just like earlier fibonacci n minus 1 plus fibonacci n minus 2 but once we have found the value of the nth term let us store the nth term in the table itself okay we have found the value of nth term let us store that in and in, uh, in the table and once we have found it let us return 
So return n n in the last. Right? So we have the first term that is m1 is 0, second term m2 is 1 and a for any other term if mn is 0 means memory table at nth index is saying 0 means this term has not been calculated yet this term has not been computed yet so let, let us make the recursive calls and once the recursive calls have been made we have found the value of the nth term let us store it in the memory table and we will return the value of nth index in the memory table so what impact it has made? Let us just compute the seventh term again. So the seventh term, what it will do, and the value of n is seven, and m seven is not zero. So m seven is zero. That means we haven't found this value yet. So let us make the recursive call f six and f five. First, there is a call of f six. Okay, whatever call we are making, we are, we are actually underlining that just to uh, differentiate between the calls that have not been made yet. So this f6, the value of n is 6 and m, mn is 0, obviously we haven't found that term yet. So let us make a call for f5 and f4, but we are making a call for f5 only here because f4 will remain pending because we have, we have, we have the recursive calls. So this one, the left one will be called first. And then f5 is also 0, so we will be making a call to f4 and f3, but f4 has not been computed yet. Then f3 and f2, so f3, f3 is 0. Let's make a call to f2 and f1. So f2, n is 2, that means the base condition. So base condition is 2. This is setting up the value of m2 at as 1. Now it will return m2. So the value of f2 has been found. We are now making the call of f1. So f1 is saying that n is 1, base condition, value of m1 will be set as 1. And then finally we will return this m1. Then we have found the value of f2 and f1 both. Let us add these two and set this as mn. That means m3 is now set as 0 plus 1, that is 1. Now, once we have found this, we now have to find this f2. So once we enter this uh, function with the value of ns2, this is setting up the value of m2 as 1. That has already been said. Okay, let's just set as 1 once again because this is the base condition. So we will have to take it like this only. And then we have found it. So we have m3, f3 plus f2 both. We now have found the value of f4. That is second term plus third term. That is 2. Now this f3. This is an interesting one. So n the value of n is 3, that means this is not the base condition. So we will be looking at the table m3, the value of m3 is 1 and we can return it from here itself. So don't make the recursive call, we just return the value from here itself. So now we have f4 and f3, add these two and now we have the value of f5. Value of f5 is fourth term and third term that is 3. Now make a call for f4, when the value of n is 4, the m4 is not 0, it is 2. That means we have already found the fourth term. So don't make the recursive call again. So we have f4, 5 and f4 both. So 2 plus 3, this is set as 5. Now we have the value of m6. Okay, and then this, one, this call will be made f5. The value of n is 5 and memory table at the fifth location is not empty, is not 0. So we already have found the value of there. So we will add this f6 and f5 both and then we have a value of f7. So value of f7 is set as 8. See, we are making only the linear calls. So how many calls we have been made in this uh, table? See how many calls have been made in this table? If the value of n is 7, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. 
so 2 into 5 calls 1 2 3 4 5 plus 1 if we are if we have to cal cal compute the nth Fibonacci term then the number of calls will be made as n 2 into n minus 2 plus 1 so this is 2n minus 1 so the number of calls which are made are 2n minus 1 and for every function call we have to compute some uh, so sorry, sorry activation record will be pushed in and then it will be popped out when the value is getting returned so the total number of operations are 4n minus 2 <coughs> so the efforts is theta n in the earlier case it was theta 2 raised to the power n a huge one and now we have theta n the linear one so we have reduced the complexity briefly not not briefly actually we have reduced the complexity to a great extent so what actually is the advantage of uh, this uh, technique that we have used that the complexity is getting reduced drastically so this actually is the dynamic programming where we are using the concept of recursion with the memory table so recursion plus memory table this actually becomes the dynamic programming although it is not a complete definition of the dynamic programming but yes it is just a concept by which by using the memory table we are able to reduce the complexity drastically once we have found the result of uh, some operation we are saving it somewhere and we will be using those operations for the next cases okay Thank you.